Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis so, who, who has a relative who has passed away? Ah, Tatya. This is part of Ah, the father is upstairs as well. Yes. So, I just want to say that you should not be in any anxiety and don't worry for her. Hmm? Those who were in the Vaishnava family, they never had any problem at home. Krishna arranges for them very uh, good birth and good Vaishnava association in the next life, so they love and grow and grow. So don't be worried. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, when someone passes away, there is some ceremony, some sraddha, 
uh, to be performed. So for this, the first thing you have to do is make a feast and feed all the Vaishnavas. So you are doing that. Then mm. also by mantra, if you uh, know any Brahmin priest, they can perform a fire yagya and offer water to your to your sister also and send the Mahaprasad. If you don't know anyone who can do that, you can speak to me afterwards and I'll arrange, I'll call our ashram in India and they'll do it at once. Okay. One more thing you should also do mm. for the uh, benefit of your sister and that is to feed cows. Mm -hmm. So I, if you know cows here in New York, you should go and feed them. Otherwise, you can speak to me also afterwards and we'll, I'll call the Goshala in India and we'll arrange to feed the bring the cows. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, you, so you don't worry. So sometimes people are concerned that um, all the ceremonies have not been done perfectly. But you know, in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a very beautiful pastime. Bali Maharaj was performing a jagya. But in, the, in, in one uh, break, in that jagya, when he was receiving guests and giving in charity, so then uh, to the yagya of Bali Maharaj came Lord Vamandev. So Lord Vamandev came there and as you know, he asked for only three steps of land. <laughs> but it was a trick and he became very huge and in two steps, he took the whole universe, everything from Bali Maharaj and said, Oh, where can I place my third step? Bali Maharaj said, My Lord, you can keep your lotus feet upon my head. Hmm? So then Lord Vamandev, he said, uh, But I've already taken the whole universe and you are part of the universe. This is not any extra thing. So where can I keep the third step? You have broken your promise. So because you have broken your promise, I should punish you. And he bound him up in the snake ropes. And then he pushed him down to Sutal. But by his grace, that Sutal planter system had become more opulent, more glorious than the kingdom of Indra in heaven. Okay. Yeah, in that Svarga look. So, at that time, when Vamandev was about to leave, then he said to the priest of Bali Maharaj, that is a Shukracharya, he told him, said, now, uh, there's a problem because when you perform a yagya, then the yajaman, the person for whom the yagya is being performed, should be present. But I have pushed the Bali Maharaj down to Sutta planetary system. So you should make some arrangement to perhaps make a, um, a vigraha or painting of him or some, some other, make an arrangement so that you can complete this yagya. At that time, Shukracharya, he said, Oh my Lord, hmm? Mantra tas tantra tas chidram desha kalara vastunaha sarvam karoti nis chidram anusankirtanam tava. He said, Oh my Lord, if someone is doing a yagya, a sacrifice, any ceremony for their relatives or anything, and there's some fault in the mantra or the tantra, in the procedure of the chanting of Vedic mantras, if there's any fault in the time, the place, or the circumstance, then Sarvam karoti nischidram, everything becomes per uh, faultless, everything becomes perfect. How? Anu sankirtanam tava. Jai. By continuous Harinam sankirtan. Hari Say Harinam Prabhu ki. Jai. So you should know that by bringing all devotees together and having Harinam sankirtan today and more sankirtan later, <coughs> so, then there is no fault, any, no defect whatsoever in the observance of the passing away of your sister. So be peaceful and happy. Everything is mangal. Everything is auspicious. In this Kali Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is This is the best thing for everyone. The chanting of the holy names. Did you chant your japa this morning? Huh? On your mala? Oh, okay. Then we can allow. But tomorrow morning you must chant from today. <laughs> from tomorrow you must take your mala in the morning. Hmm? Don't wake up and go to the coffee. Wake up and go to your japa mala and chant the names of Krishna. Everyone. Every day. If you 
immortal speciousness in your life. This holy name is so wonderful. So wonderful. Now, Hare Krishna is Radha and Krishna themselves. And slowly but surely, if you will chant Hari Nam day by day, they will purify your heart and make your heart like beautiful Brindavan. And then they will play there. If your heart is New York, if your heart is Trinidad, Radha Krishna will not play there. <laughs> Radha Krishna, Nityalila is going on always in Brindavan. So, make your heart Brindavan. How? By chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Krishna himself and Balaram also, they came together in this Kali Yuga in the form of Sri Sri Gornitai. So whenever you have Darshan, you see Gornitai, how are they like this? What does it mean? Hands up means surrender. You know, some pose a gun. Huh? <laughs> surrender. So hands up means surrender. Huh? Surrender to Krishna. Because Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dhanamam Parichanya, Mami Kam Shakam Praja, Am Tom Sarva Babi O Moksha Shami Masu Chaha. Don't be concerned with uh, irreligion and religion, all these activities. Just surrender yourself fully to me. Be mine. Don't worry about your karma or anything. I'll take everything away. So Sishi Gornitai is showing everyone. Surrender to Krishna. And their hands are up. Why? Because they're dancing. Always dancing. In Kirtan. Before our class today, we sang this very beautiful song. Deva di Deva Gaur Chanda Gaurida Sumandiri It's not composed by an ordinary person. It was composed by Gaurida Spandit. An eternal associate of Gauritai. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jeeva Daya Kauri Swaparshada Sri Dharma Sahabhatari See Krishna being very merciful for all of us, all the souls in this Kali Yuga. He descended Swaparshada Sri Dharma Sahabhatari, not alone, but he came with his Dham, Navadvip Dham, and he came along Krishna came along with his eternal associates of Krishna Lila. They came with him in Gora Lila also. Gorangera Songi Gane, Nitya Siddha Kori Mani, Sai Jai, Brajendra Sutta Pars. If you want to go directly to the son of Nanda Maharaj to see Krishna, how is it possible? You should have very firm faith and love. For the associates of Gornitai, Nitya Siddha Karimani, understand, they are not ordinary human beings. They are not persons hmm, like you and I, bound up by karmas in this world. But rather, Janma Karma Chame Dibyam Evam Yoveditha Tataha. Just as Sri Krishna appears in this world by his sweet will in his transcendental form, so in the same way, Nanda Baba, Yashoda Maya, Subha, Sri Dham, Dham, Vasudham, Arjuna, Vanka, Stoka, Krishna, Badu, Mangala, all the coward boys, hmm? and Radhika, Lalit, Nishaka, Chacha, Champakalata, Indulai, Katunga, Vidyananga, Devi, Sudevi, Bhukmaja, Retmaja, all gopis, hmm? and all the cows, also, every, all the associates of Radha Krishna, from the spiritual world, they come and they appear here, in their divine spiritual forms, and in Gauralita, they are also coming, also in Gauralila. And when we remember them, when we honor them, when we respect them, then we get more benefit remembering the associates of Krishna than remembering Krishna himself. This is a fact. Krishna said, Man Bhakta Puja Abhyadika, the worship of my devotee is superior to worship of me. Why is that? Because to see Krishna, to realize Krishna, to attain 
ने नित्य निकुंज सेवा स्वामी सब सी सी राधे कृष्ण युग इन वृंदावन फॉर दैट यू नीड प्रे प्रेमन जनक चरित भक्ति विलोचन है ना संतक सदैव रिदाय यीशु के लोग कहें थे सो कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ ही डस नॉट हैव लव फॉर कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ डस नॉट हैव कृष्ण प्रेम हु हैज कृष्ण प्रेम ऑल ऑफ हिज एसोसिएट्स द एसोसिएट्स ऑफ कृष्ण दे आर द एश्राय ऑफ लव सो व्हेन वी बाउ डाउन टू देम व्हेन वी ऑनर देम देन बाय द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ दोस सो दैट लव कम्स टू अस देन वी कैन realize krishna and serve krishna so there's one very wonderful associate of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu his name was gouridas pandit who has composed this song he was born in 1485 which means one year before chaitanya mahaprabhu was born so he's just one year older and he was born in the village of shaligram He was the son of Kamsari Mishra. Kamsari Mishra, he, he had actually six sons, and Gorida's Pandit was number four. So his elder brother was Surya Sarka. Have you heard of Surya Sarka? He's the father of Janavata Karani and Vasudha, the Shaktis of Nityanand Babu. So we cannot imagine what a great personality he is. So. Gauri Das, when he was young man, he was not inclined to be involved in worldly activities. He just wanted to serve Krishna, always do bhajan. So he went to his brother, elder brother Sir Dasako, and he asked him, "I want to go on parikrama to visit various holy places, but I have some attachment in my heart to our family deity, Radha Madhav." And to the Shila, Shalagram Shila, Damodar Shila. So I request you, my dear brother, when I go traveling, please allow me to take Radha Madhav and Damodar Shila with me. So then his elder brother was very kind, and he blessed him. Yes, you can serve them. So then Gorda's packet left with Radha Madhav and Damodar Shila, and began to visit various holy places. And after some time, he came to the bank of the Ganga, who oh, just on the outside of the Navadip Dam, within Gauda Mandal, but just outside Navadip Dam, to a place called Ambika Kalna. So in the song, it's saying mm, that Nityananda Sange Gauda Ambika Tedi Hari. He's remembering how Gauri Thai used to. Dance there in Ambika, Ambika Kalna. So at that time, Gorendas Pandit, he made a small hut on the bank of the Ganga, and there was a shade of a tamarind tree, and he used to worship his deity. Said, "Chant Hari Nam," feeling separation from Krishna. He was not chanting Hari Krishna and watching TV, checking his phone. He was chanting with a melting heart. Ah, Krishna, ah, Krishna, where are you? Where are you? At that time, though Mahaprabhu had appeared, he did not know that Mahaprabhu, and he did not know that that Krishna, he whose name he was chanting, had appeared there in Navadvi. Only he was worshiping Krishna. So. His love for Krishna is natural and spontaneous. Why? Because he is the incarnation of Subal, Subal Saka. Subal is Krishna's closest, closest friend. Sri Rupa Goswami has said that the love of Subal is so intense that Subal does not let go of the hand of Krishna even in his dreams. <laughs> Krishna has many different types of friends. Some of them are older, like Mandali Bhadra, and Balaram of course is older. And those friends who are older, they carry sticks and they walk around Krishna. They protect him. <laughs> they have a mood. He's my little brother or younger friend. I should protect him if in, any, in case any demons come. <laughs> <laughs> Then he has friends who are younger, like Raktak, Patrak, Chitrak, and they feel they are. Huh? 
They are Krishna's servants. So in the morning they help decorate him and dress him before he goes out for taking the cows to grace. Then he has friends who are the same age, so they are equals with him. Oh Krishna, let's wrestle. Let's swim together. Hmm? And then he has some friends. They are called Priya Narmasakas. The Priya Narmasakas are very special because Rupa Goswami Pad said, Atyantika Rahasya Gya Sakibhava Samasvata. It means that of all the friends, they are the only ones who know that Krishna has some secrets. Parties in prayer. And yes, Krishna has some secrets. And that secret is that Krishna has some secret girlfriends. <laughs> Radhika, Chandravali, Bhadra, Shaidra, Padma, and so all the young gopis of Vrindavan, even those who are married. And Krishna secretly meets with them. So in the mid-morning, when Krishna is with his friends after playing, they rest a little, and Krishna only with the Priya Navasakas. With a few Priya Navasakas, he sneaks away, and those friends help arrange for Krishna to meet with various gopis. Hmm? Actually, each friend is assigned to each group of gopis. Hmm? So one friend is in charge of arranging Krishna's meeting with Chandravali. One friend is, a, is in charge of arranging Krishna's meeting with Shalala. But there's one friend, very, very dear to Krishna, who is in charge of arranging Krishna's meeting with Shimati Radhika. And who is that? Subha. Subha. <laughs> Subha Saka. So Jantika Rahasya Kya, he knows extremely, excessively secret, confidential knowledge of Krishna's pastimes. Krishna trusts him so much. See, one day Sri Rupa Manjari was glorifying Subal. She said, how glorious is Subal? Hmm? Is there no service that Subal cannot do? See, Subal arranges for Krishna to meet with his beloved. If his beloved becomes angry with him, then Krishna will send Subal. And he, Subal will follow her and speak very sweet words. Krishna is very sorry. Don't be upset with him. It was not his fault. He will die without you. And in this way, Subal can speak so sweetly to change her mind and bring her back to meet with Krishna again. Hmm? Subal is so intimate to Krishna. When Krishna is mm, lying, re reclining with his head on the chest of his beloved gopi in the kunj, at that time Subal can fan him. Hmm? But you, sh you should know, Cannot find like Rupa Manjari. Mm, she's huh? mm, not that. <laughs> you cannot find like Rupa Manjari. Why? Because Rupa Manjari can be inside the Kunjamandi. Mm. Where Radha Krishna are resting and she'll take a chamber and directly fan them. But Subha, no male person can go inside the Kunj. So Subha can fan, but he has to be outside. And there's a ceiling fan with a rope that goes outside. He sits outside. And <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise it will be rasa pas. Any male person cannot go in the kunch of Radha Madha. Yeah? Rupa Manjari can go. This is why in our line, in our Sampradaya, we are Rupa Nuga, the followers of Rupa Goswami. Yeah? Very, very special. So, that very Subhal, can you imagine? Now he has appeared. In this Kali Yuga as Goridas Pandit. And when he's chanting Harinam, he's remembering these beautiful pastimes and weeping. So one day, it happened that uh, Nimai Pandit and Nityananda Prabhu, they were walking through Navadweep. And they saw one hut and a sannyasi came out. That sannyasi said, oh, Brahmins, please come and come into my bhajan kut here. So Gornitai accepted the invitation, they came and they sat down. And that sannyasi was talking with them. Can I offer you some fruits? And he offered them some fruits. That Gornitai were taking some fruits. So then they noticed that there was one woman staying in that bhajan kutir with the sannyasi. So then they thought, oh, how is that possible? Then that sannyasi said, would you like some ananda? Nityananda said, no, 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 no. He said, then he said to 
Nemaj Pandit, would you like some Ananda? Nemaj Pandit was very innocent. Ananda? What, is, what does he mean, Ananda? The temple said, he means alcohol. <laughs> then Nemaj Pandit dropped the food, he got up quickly and washed his hands. And the two of them got up and they ran out of there. This was a very irreligious person. Pretending to be a sannyasi and associating with women and drinking alcohol, Gornitai quickly ran away. But you should understand that they are so merciful. At least they came to his place and they accepted some service from him. So Gornitai are such that they are very, they are bhāraya, very, very merciful even to fallen persons. So Gornitai, they were so shocked that they jumped into the Ganges with all their clothes. Yeah. With all their clothes, they jumped in the Ganges to purify themselves. And they floated and floated and floated in the Ganges for more than an hour. And gradually, they came out of the water at Shantipur. So Shantipur, there is the house of Advaita Acharya. So Advaita Acharya had been thinking to himself, I called Supreme Lord to come to this world. Chaitanya Radhasa Mui, Chaitanya Radhas, Chaitanya Radhasa Mui, Dasa Ranudas. I am the servant of the servant of the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he sees me as a senior, senior Vaishnava. Because Advaita Charya is a disciple of Madhavanda Puri. And Madhavanda Puri's disciple is Ishwar Puri. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his disciple is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Advaita Charya is on the same level as his Guru. So Advaita Charya was thinking, he always respects me on the same level of his Guru. But he cannot tolerate because I am only his servant. I am the servant of the servant of the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I should do something to inspire him to really accept me as his Das. Hmm? If someone accepts you as their servant, then what do they do? They chastise you. They can give you a punishment. You can, anyone cannot do that to their seniors. So Advaita Charya, he was giving classes in Shantapur on the Yoga Vashisht, of Vishishta Rishi. So this Yoga Vishisht is actually not glorifying Bhakti, it's glorifying Gyan, knowledge. So then Nimai Panditi got out, climbed out of the Ganges. He had come there to chastise Advaita Charya over this. And still soaking wet, he came into the courtyard of Advaita Charya when he was sitting and giving class on the Advaita Vishist. Hmm? So then Chaitanya Mahapu approached him. He said, Advaita Acharya, tell me, what is better? What is the best? Bhakti? Oh, yeah. Advaita Acharya closed his eyes like a Mayavadi and he was rocking backwards. <laughs> He said, you called me here to spread bhakti everywhere and now you are glorifying Gyan, what is this? And he jumped up and he grabbed Advaita Acharya and he threw him on the ground. Uh, and he began to beat him. Advaita Acharya was very happy. Hey, bo, hey, bo. <laughs> and his wife, Sita, Sita Thakurani came and said, stop, stop, he's an old man, you'll kill him. <laughs> hmm? So then, Mahaprabhu, he, he calmed down and the Dwaita Chari offered very beautiful prayers to him. At that time, thousands of people from all around the local villages on both sides of the Ganges, they heard, oh, Mahaprabhu has come to Shantipur, let's all go to see him. And they were crossing the Ganges in boats. And they all went to have the darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Avandi Mai Pandit. At that time, just on the other side of the Ganga from Shantipur, in Ambika Kalna, Gorida's Pandit was there sitting beneath a tamal tree. And sorry, tamarind tree. And chanting Hare Krishna and remembering the past times of Krishna. Some people came to him and said, Gorida's Pandit, don't you know Krishna has appeared? In Kaliyu, and he's just the other side of the Ganga now. 
He's in Shantipur in the house of Advaita Acharya. Come, everyone's going, let's go. But he said, no. Yeah. If my Krishna, if he's really my Krishna, then he'll know. And he'll come to me. Yeah. So everyone left. And Goridas Pandit was left alone in Anbhikakana and Jantikarina. So though thousands of people were there in Shantipur, and they were chanting the holy names. But it somehow, Mahaprabhu, he looked like he wasn't present. He was staring. Huh? And without anyone noticing, he got up and disappeared from there. And he came to the bank of the Ganga. He was looking around. There was no boat. But he saw a little, like, cargo, a little dinghy with a small <laughs> oar. It was old and not in good condition. So he got into this little dinghy and he took the oar and Mahabubu, he rode across the very fast moving Kanga. It was very dangerous. He got to the other side. Then he got out of the boat. And he, his mind was so much thinking about his devotee that he forgot to leave the oar in the boat. So he still had the oar in his hand. <laughs> and he came directly to that tamarind tree. And it, he came to Gorida's Pandit. And then he realized, oh, I have this oar. So he gave it to him. He said, this is for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. By this oar, anyone can cross over the ocean of the <laughs> If you go there, still there. yeah, you can have darshan of that, of that oar today. I was just there just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so Gorida's Pandit embraced Mahaprabhu. And the two of them, they fainted in ecstasy and they were rolling on the ground. Hmm? No one can describe how much love is there. Because now, oh, after so many years, Subal, Krishna's best friend, and Krishna himself are meeting again after a long time. Mahaprabhu said, come with me, come with me. And he took Goridas Pandit back to Navadvip with him and he stayed there for some time and Mahabhu wanted to give him a gift. So as you know, we don't have any books written by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wrote one book that was a commentary on the Navyan Nyai. He wrote a Tipani uh, commentary on the uh, Navyan Nyai, one Navyan Nyai Shastra of the Gangesh Upadhyay. But uh, Mahaprabhu, when he was a student, he wrapped it up and he threw it in the Ganges. So no one knows what is in that book. He didn't want to write anything because if Mahaprabhu had written anything, then all other authors would have become obsolete and redundant. <laughs> and of course, he, he did not write, but he spoke Shikshastakam. But there's one text that he wrote with his own hand. Uh, that he did not compose. It was a text he had himself spoken in his previous life, Bhagavad Gita. Jai. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by hand had written out every verse of Bhagavad Gita. And this he gave to Gurdas Pandit as a gift. And also, yes, if you go to Ambika. Uh, next year, all of you come to Navadip Parakrama. Uh, and I'll take you there and you can have Darshan of Mahaprabhu's handwritten Bhagavad Gita. Who's coming next year? Yes? Or I will send you all the invitation. Mm -hmm. The time and everything. And book your rooms and everything. Don't worry. So it must come next. So then, the Goridas Bandit, he went back to Ambika uh, with this Gita. And every day he would open. And just seeing the beautiful handwriting of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his heart would be melted and he was feeling so much joy. So how he used to serve, so lovingly. But you know that the Sankirtan pastimes of Nimai Pandit in Navadvip, they began when he was just about 23 years old and went on for one year, only one year. And then what happened? In the middle of the night, he ran away. Swimming across the Ganga, he went to Katwa and Nimai Pandit took sannyas from K 
Keshava Bharati and broke the hearts of everyone in Navadweep. He was, and from there he wanted to go to Brindavan. But because um, Sachi Mata was crying, then they might, uh, Nitya Nandapu, seeing the tears of Sachi Mata, he assured her, don't worry, I'll bring him back. So when Mahaprabhu was trying to go to Brindavan, hmm, then Nitya Nandapu played a trick on him. He was following the roads and he would ask the coward boys who were taking care of cows along the way, oh, is this the way to Brindavan? And when he was asking the boys, is this the way to Vrindavan? Nityanandabhu was behind him and he was going to the boys. <laughs> and then the boys saying Nityanandabhu, they just pointed like this. And in this way, by a trick, Nityanandabhu brought Mahaprabhu around in a big circle and brought him back to, to Bengal, to Akshi Shantipur, to the house of Advaita Acharya. So now, Mahaprabhu has taken sannyas and again, he is just across from Goridas Pandit's place and in the Shantipur. Again, all the Navadip Basits, because they thought they'd never see him ever again. But now he came back and all the residents of Navadip, they came to Shantipur. Advaita Charya sent servants, please go and bring Sachimata. And they were carrying Sachimata like a brick, like a queen on a palanquin from Navadip. Everyone could come. Oh, except for one person could not come to see him. Who is that? Vishnu Priya. Hmm? Nimai Pandit's wife. The wife of Mahapu Vishnu Priya. Because when you take sannyas, then you cannot see your wife. Wife cannot be to him again. So everyone left. And all very young. Only about 15 years old. She was left behind. So at that time when everyone was going, they told Gorodas Pandit also, Come on, let's go. Again, he refused. I'm not going. Why? The reason this time was because he was thinking, how could Mahaprabhu leave his mother Sachimata? How could he leave his devoted wife Vishnu Priya? Hmm? I can use this one. How how could he leave his why is Vishnu Priya? He was, he has become selfish, only thinking about himself. I will not go to see him. So he stayed there. In the meantime, over there in Shankipur, though thousands of devotees were there. But the praying of Goridas Pandit was attracting the heart of Chaitanya. Now his name is not Nimai Pandit anymore. Now his name is Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because this is the nature of Prem. Krishna said, Ama Bhakta Preme Bandhyache Vridaya Bitare Yaha Yaha Netra Pare Dekaye Amare My pure devotees have bound me up with the rope of love and they keep me always in their heart. I cannot leave them. Wherever their eyes fall, they see me there everywhere. The spurti, the vision of me. So, at that time, being drawn, being attracted by the powerful love of Goridas Pandit, Mahaprabhu and Vityanandabhu also, they snuck away from there and took a boat across the river and they came to the Bhajan Kutir, the simple hut of Goridas Pandit in Ambika Kauna. When Goridas Pandit saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu now as a sannyasi, his heart was broken. He said, Oh, bhai, oh, brother, why have you done this and gone far away? Why don't you come with me on the bank of Jamuna? Do you remember when we used to tend the cows on the bank of the Jamuna? He was always remembering. In Vrindavan, where a gentle breeze is blowing, and Krishna is waiting in the kunj 
decorated with a beautiful Banamala garland of flowers down to his feet. He's all dressed up so nicely because he has a date. He's waiting for Radharani to come. And Subal used to arrange for their meeting together. Mm -hmm. He used to remember that dear Samir, Yamunatir, on the bank of Jibali. So, he was very happy that Gorni Tai had come to his home and they stayed there for some time. But, the, our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, now I'm a sannyasi, and it's the rule of a sannyasi that he cannot stay long in the house of any Grihastha. He should only go as long as it takes to milk a cow, and then take some milk and go be on his way. Hmm? So Gorni Tai, they were going to leave. But Goridas Pandits, he was about to die. How can I live without you? You go far away to Jagannath Puri. So then Mahapur told him, All right, I have a solution. You should mm, cut one neem tree and carve deities of myself and Nityananda Prabhu. And in this form, I'll always stay with you. Hmm? Does anyone here have the deities of Goridas? Who has who is serving Gorni Thai? You're serving? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes, serving Gorni Thai. So you should know that your deities of Gorni Thai, they are expansion of these deities. Because these deities of Gorni Thai were the first deities of Gorni Thai ever. And all other deities of Gorni Thai, they are the Prakash, the expansions of this Gorni Thai. Mm. Uh, because, you know, it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. Amar Agyai Magi E Bhiksha Bolo Krishna Bajo Krishna Karo Krishna Shiksha Hey, Haridas Thakur Nityananda go door to door and beg everyone. You should do Bhiksha, beg from them something. And when they say what you want, then you say Bolo Krishna Bajo Krishna Karo Krishna Shiksha. Just chant the holy names. Serve Krishna and follow the teachings of Krishna that are given in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, he never told anyone, worship me. He never he told everyone, you worship Krishna. Don't worship me, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You worship Krishna. But this was the first time ever. He said, you can make a deity of myself and Nityananda Prabhu and serve them. Hmm? So don't worry. You will not have any difficulty in this. Hmm? Because if you are not a sculptor, then you may think it's very difficult. So inspired by Mahaprabhu, very quickly, he made the deities of Gornitai. And then Gornitai, they paid farewell to him, and they were leaving. So then, Goridas Pandit, he looked at the wooden deities. Hmm? And he thought, this is just some pieces of wood. I've been cheated. <laughs> And he got up and he ran after Gorni Thai. And he fell at their, their feet and said, Don't go, don't go. Don't go. Please stay. So then Gorni Thai, they said, All right, we'll stay. And then Gorni Thai, they became deities. And the deities on the altar got down and they were leaving. <laughs> so then he was holding the feet of Gorni Thai who became deities. And he saw Gorni Thai were leaving. So then he ran to them also. And then he called them, Please, please don't leave. Hmm? So then, they, all four of them agreed. Gornitai and Gornitai. <laughs> so they came back. So then Mahaprabhu, one of the Mahaprabhus, no, no, no one knows which one it was. One of them said, make four plates of Mahaprasadam. Hmm? So then, he prepared four plates of Boga to offer to them. And then, he put them down. And two Gornitai, and two Gornitai, they sat down and they took Prasadam. So then at the end of the meal, one of them, one of the Mahaprabhus, no one knows which one. He said, you can choose who you want to stay. Us or us. <laughs> you cannot say us or them. Right? You have to say us or us. <coughs> so then, Govardhas Pandit, he chose. And then that, Gornitai stayed there in Ambika Kalna. And the other two, they left from there. Hmm? So you should think that your Gornitai is that very Gornitai. Hmm? Is your Gornitai the deity of Mahaprabhu or actual Nityananda Mahaprabhu? Actual. 
Pati na nahitumi saksat brajanda nandan. Mahaprabhu, he used to say in, when he showed the deity of Krishna. You are not deity. You are the son of Madhya Shoda and Nanda Maharaj. Hmm? So not deities. Son of Sachi. And son of Padmavati. That Gorni Thai, you are serving them. No deities at all. So then, Gorni Thai, they left. And as you know, Mahapu went to stay in Jagannath Puri. But before Mahapu left, he gave a warning to Goridas Pandit. He said, I am staying with you in the form of this deity. But one thing you should know, and that is, if any devotee will come with the very highest level of praying, and they come to see me, then I'll go and I'll leave you and I'll go with them <laughs> and stay with them. So then Goridas Pandit, after Mahapu left, he didn't want anyone to see the deities of Goridas. <laughs> oh, yes. He always used to keep the door closed. He did the puja behind closed doors. No, 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 no one can see. But the problem is this. Now Mahaprabhu has gone to Jagannath Puri and everyone in Navadweep. Advaita Charya, Srivas Thakur, everyone, Murari Gupta, Chandra Sheikha Acharya, Sachimath, everyone, they're all feeling separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But they all know that he's staying there in the house of Goridas Pandit. So everyone wants to have darshan and they're all coming, please, please, let me. We want to see Mahaprabhu, just let us see him for a moment. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Huh? You were so attached. Huh? Attachment. Understand? Huh? Do you have attachment for Gornitai? Huh? And pray to Gornitai. Huh? So in the end, the residents of Navadvi, they went to Vishnu Priya. And they asked Vishnu Priya, huh? the ex-wife, now ex-wife of Mahaprabhu, please, you ask Gornitai. If you can have brush, we will not be able to say no to you. Huh? Then Vishnu Priya came. And Vishnu Priya came to Ambika and she, she asked Kurita, please, can I have darshan of the son of Sachi? And what can Gurita find it? He cannot say it. So she said, just darshan, just for a moment, you know, it's called Janki darshan. Like in Banki Bihari and Brindavan. Mm -hmm. huh? Janki darshan. Curtain, go. <laughs> <laughs> so then Gordas Panditi could not refuse. So then Vishnu Priya came in, in front of the Mandir and everyone else got behind her. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if you, if you follow in the footsteps of the great Vaishnavas, then you can have darshan of Krishna. Understand? When we are behind, when we are following the pure Vaishnavas, then we can really attain Sri Krishna's mercy. So they were behind and Gordas Pandit, like this. So to this day, if you go there also, there's only Janki Darshan. Just for a moment. <laughs> so now, Gordas Pandit was serving Gornitai, oh, very, very lovingly. One day he came into the temple room, and he was decorating them. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sa said to him, this deity spoke to him, Oh, do you remember those days? Hmm? In your previous life, when we used to play on the bank of Jamuna in Vrindavan, and then Gauridas Pandit looked, and he did not see Gornitai. He saw Krishna, Krishna and Balaram. Hmm? <laughs> did you see Krishna and Balaram? If you're serving Gornitai, have you seen Krishna and Balaram? With Krishna with the peacock feathers in his hair and Krishna and Balaram carrying the buffalo horn bugle with flutes and stick for herding the cows. Very sweet. Madhurya Rupa of Brajalila. And then the form disappeared. One day, Goridas Pandit, he was 
meditating in the morning, sitting beneath the, that tamarind tree and chanting Arenam. And in his heart, he saw Gornita and he was thinking, I want to decorate them with the beautiful jeweled and golden ornaments. But I don't have such ornaments. So after some time he finished his chanting, he got up and he went to the temple room and he opened and there he saw Gauri Thai were decorated in all jewels and golden ornaments. And seeing this he fainted. He was unconscious. Then when he came back into sense, huh, then they were not decorated anymore. He said, my Lord, hmm, I had some desire to decorate you with golden jewels, but I didn't know what kind of ornaments, how I should decorate you. Hmm? So then Gauri Thai told him, don't worry about that. Our favorite ornaments are made of flowers. <clears throat> you know, Krishna likes ornaments and Radharani. They prefer the ornaments made of flowers. So then, Gorya's bandit went and picked flowers and made crowns and garlands and bracelets and armlets and anklets and belts, everything all from flowers. And Gornitai were very happy. Hmm? You see, if you only have jewels on your deity, then you can put the jewels on, leave them there for two weeks. Huh? That is not seva. Mm -hmm. But flowers, you have to make fresh every day. Huh? And it's fresh love. Fresh love every day. One day, Goridas Pandit, he prepared. Actually, every day he was making many, many preparations. And he bought the boga and he placed it down before Gornitai. And generally, he experienced that when he put the boga before Gornitai, they would come off the altar and sit down and they would watch his deities eat. Huh? But this day he put there and they, they didn't come and sit down and eat. They just, Gornitai just looked at each other. Huh? <laughs> Gornitai's pundit, in loving anger, he said, look, if you, if you, had told me that you didn't want to eat today, then I wouldn't have gone to so much trouble to make all these preparations. Uh -huh. Then Gornitai said, Oh, Goridas, now you're becoming old, and it's very difficult for you to go here and there and buy so many different ingredients and make all these things. Why don't you make everything more simple? We don't need a big feast like this every day. Hmm? So then Goridas Pandit said, All right. From, from today, I only make for you rice and spinach. Mm. Boiled spinach. That's it. Mm. So then Gornitai, they laughed and they sat down and they began to eat. Mm. Mm. So even today, if you go, then you can get rice and spinach prasadam. Mm. <laughs> so in this way, Gorda spent it many years. He was completely absorbed in the loving service of Gornitai and internally. He was remembering his form as a coward boy and seeing Krishna Balaram. This is called Raganuga Bhakti. Krishna Musmaram Janam Chasya Prastam Nija Samihitam Tatak Katar Chasya So Kodyam Basa Prajay Sada. In Raganuga Bhakti, we don't remember only Krishna. We remember Krishna along with one associate in whose footsteps we want to follow. Hmm? Seva sadaka rupena, siddha rupena chattari, tadbhava vipsuna karya brajalo kanusarata. And if one chants, gradually the cheto darpanamarjanam, the heart becomes cleansed and tastes and attachment will come. And in the stage of attachment, you begin to see your uh, siddha deha, your spiritual form. So, the Goridas Pandit is doing pastimes like a devotee on that level. Outwardly, he's Gorida's Pandit serving Gornitai, and in his heart, he's Subha, and serving Krishna Balaram in Brindavan. Yeah. We want to do bhajan like this. Yeah. By mercy of Guru, it's possible. So, one day, Gorida's Pandit, some years before, he went to visit Gadada Pandit. When Gadada Pandit saw him, he said, Oh Goridas, this morning, because I've seen you early in the morning, then I know that my whole day will be auspicious. Mm -hmm. Goridas Pandit said, Oh Gadada, hmm? 
Actually, my day is auspicious seeing you. I have come here to ask you for something. Granada Pandit said, everything in my home is yours. You ask me for anything. <coughs> so at that time, Goridas Pandit, he looked and he saw there in the home of Gadada Pandit was a young boy, very young. It was Gadada Pandit's nephew. His name was Ridayananda. Goridas Pandit said, everything in your home is mine? Okay, give me that boy. <laughs> <laughs> So though he was very dear to Godada Pandit, Godada Pandit blessed that boy and said, you go and stay with Goridas. So then Goridas Pandit brought that boy back to Ambiga Kauna and after some time he trained him and gave him Diksha. Diksha Mantra. Very, very important. Do you have Diksha? Yes. Not Harinam Diksha, second initiation. Yes. Oh, yes, from Guru. Oh, try to be in the shelter of bona fide guru. Find a very qualified guru and receive Diksha Gopal Mantra. This mantra makes our sambandha, relationship with Krishna. Hmm? Everyone can chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. They can get liberation. But you cannot get praying until you have a sambandha gyan. Hmm? You cannot chant Shuddhanam. Shuddhanam m- means chanting the holy names without offense, but with Sambanda also, a very thick relationship with Krishna. So this relationship appears by the mercy of Gurudev through the Gopal Mantra. So he gave Diksha to this boy and he was training him and teaching him how to serve the Gornita. Gradually, gradually he grew up and that Ridainanda became very qualified. So one year, it was coming close to Gorpanim. The appearance day of Mahaprabhu. And every year they used to have a big festival for Gorpani. Hmm? Did you have a big festival here? Mm-hmm. Yes? Where did, where did you celebrate? In Brooklyn. Brooklyn Temple? Yes. Uh-huh. So, at that time, Goridas Pandit told his disciple, I am going to travel here and there to collect some provisions uh, for this festival. So, I'll come back soon. You just take care of Gornitai while I'm gone. So then Goridas Pandit was traveling, visiting his various disciples here and there and collecting some provisions for the festival. In the meantime, Ridainanda was waiting, waiting, and it came only two days before Gorpani. And he thought, oh, Gurudev has not returned yet. And we haven't even sent out the invitations to everyone to come to celebrate Gorpani festival here. So he hasn't returned yet, but I should take the initiative and send out the invitations to everyone. So then he made the invitations and sent them everywhere. And then just one day before Gorpani, Goridas Pandit came back. And he saw his disciple had sent the invitations without asking him. And actually he was very pleased. He was very pleased. But sometimes Guru has to do some test. Some test to the disciple. So then he acted as if he were very angry. He said, what is this? Even I am still in this world and in my presence you have become independent. When the Guru is in this world, any disciple should be completely in Anugatya, following their spiritual master's teaching, how he is doing bhajan and his instructions fully. And then if someone will do this, then after Gurudev leaves, then they will feel a very strong connection in the heart and always remain in his Anugatya even when he's not physically manifest. So, the Gordas Pandit chastised him. Hmm? And he said, well, you can make your own festival, but I'm not coming to it. And he sent him away. So then Ridayananda, he went out onto the uh, bank of the Ganga, and he was hmm, crying there. He think, oh, I have upset my Gurudev. But some or other, he told me I have to anyway make this festival, so I should do it. So then the Gorpanim day came. And just before that, a boat came down the Ganges, and it was a very rich uh, disciple of Goridas Pandit, and he had so many things for the festival in the boat. So Ridananda told the messenger from that boat, Oh, go and tell uh, Guru Dev that you have arrived with all these uh, ingredients for the festival. So that messenger went. And he came to Goridas Pandit. Goridas Pandit said, oh, he should take everything and use it in his festival. But I'm not coming. 
<laughs> so the messenger came back and they then they made a very big pandal and thousands and thousands of people came beautiful decorations and a feast for the evening they got everything ready for the Abhishek and they were having a very big Harinam Sankirtan so while the Sankirtan was going on then everyone was very surprised to see in the middle of that Kirtan <laughs> Nitai Chaitanya Bale Natsri Amarman Nitai Chaitanya Bale Natsri Amarman Natsri Amarman Natsri Amarman Gornitai themselves appeared in that kirtan dancing Oh shiny more effulgent than a million suns with complexions like molten gold drowning everyone in waves of love for Krishna in Vrindavan and in the meantime, Goridas Pandit, he had one servant named Gangadas. He told him, oh, you should go and make the offering to Gornitai now. And when Gangadas went into the temple, no deities were there. Gornitai were gone. And he came back, he told Goridas Pandit, I went to the temple room, but Gornitai are gone. And Goridas could hear very big kirtan going on. Like not a, any type of ordinary kirtan, extraordinary kirtan. So then he thought, ah... So I didn't go to the festival, but Gornitai must have gone to that festival. And he took a stick in his hand and he came. And so even though in his heart he was very happy, but outwardly he was showing anger. And he came there to the kirtan. And when he arrived in the kirtan, then Gornitai saw Gornitai's panic coming very angrily. And they quickly ran. And they ran it, went back into his temple room and stood on the altar again. <laughs> <laughs> But the form of Gornitai quickly ran away from the kirtan and went to the altar. But Goridas Pandit himself had a divine vision. He saw that Gornitai, being afraid of him, ran and took shelter in the heart of Ridainanda. They jumped into his heart wow. and he saw Gornitai there, afraid and hiding in the heart of Ridainanda. So when he saw this divine vision, he was in ecstasy, he began to tremble and he dropped his stick on the ground. And then he embraced his beloved disciple Ridainanda. And he was weeping. He felt so blessed to have such a qualified disciple. How could he find such a qualified disciple? Where did this disciple come from? Kadada Pandit. Kadada Pandit is Radharani herself. Radharani herself had sent this person uh, to be with him. And there's a reason, there's a very special reason for that. First of all, many years before, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had made a, a prediction. If a very high level Vaishnava with a high love comes, then I will take his service. I will leave you and be in his, uh, served by him. But this was not a curse. This was a blessing. Why? Because Goridas Pandit, he had told Mahaprabhu, why have you gone away? Don't you remember when we used to play on the bank of Jamuna? At the dear Samir? Huh? So when mm, Goridas Pandit was becoming old, that feeling came in his heart. I want to go to Vrindavan. I need to go. I must go to Vrindavan to dear Samir. But who will take care of Gornitai? So Radharani herself had sent someone who was very qualified. And now he had grown up and his bhakti was mature. And now the, sim the sign had come to Goridas Pandits. Oh, I want to stay with him now. So Goridas Pandits. He said, from today your name will not be Ridayananda. Your name will be Ridai Chaitanya. In whose heart Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always living. And he gave the service of Gornitai fully, full time to Ridai Chaitanya. And Goridas Pandit being old, he left Ambika Kalna and he went to Vrindavan. Jamunati Bosati Boni 
Manmani. Where Subal is arranging for Radharani and her Sakis to come and meet with Krishna. One time they were playing together on the bank of Jamuna. And one friend of Chandravali, that's the anti-party against Radharani's group, came to the mother-in-law of Radharani and said, Oh Chutila, your daughter-in-law is so chaste, so religious. And if you go to the bank of Jamuna right now, you'll find out exactly how religious she is. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jyotila thought, oh, now I have some inside information. Huh? Because Padma, she's always trying to do sabotage to Radha Krishna's Leela. It's like this, the different groups of gopis. The Vipaksha, Swapaksha, those who are against each other, they sabotage all the plans to meet with Krishna. So then Jyotila set out from Yavat and she was coming and as she was going through the forest one parrot of Radharani saw Jyotila coming so parrots can move very quickly so the parrot was flying <laughs> as fast as he, he could and came there and said Jyotila is coming Jyotila is coming so then Radha Krishna and, and the Sakis they thought what should we do Madhu Mango was there Subal was there so then Krishna came up with an idea Radharani hid somewhere and they took Radharani's cloth and they decorated Subal just like Radharani because Subal has a very golden complexion and face like Radharani and they decorated Subal like Radharani and sat down Subal next to Krishna. Hmm? So then Jyotila arrived there I said, Aha! Now it's true I am what all the rumors that I heard are true now I've caught you. Hmm? I'll bring you before Purnamasi and the village elders and we'll see what punishment should be given? And then she came to, to grab Radharani. Just then Manu Mangal said, Oh, you old woman, are you blind? And then pulled off the veil from Subha. <laughs> and then Jyotila saw, Ah, it's not my no, daughter, no, it's Subha. And she became completely embarrassed. All the gopis were laughing and clapping their hands. Hmm? And then Jyotila quickly went home. She was so ashamed. She could not show her face for two weeks in public. <laughs> huh? And also now Radha Krishna have a good excuse. If, a, if anyone will tell Jyotila, oh, you know, that your daughter-in-law is meeting with Krishna in, in the forest of Vrindavan. Then Jyotila will think, oh, they're probably trying to play a trick on me again. That Padma played a trick on me before. I'm not going to, I won't fall for that trick again. <laughs> I'm not going. Mm -hmm. So in this way, Subha, he rendered such beautiful service in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And now in the form of Gorda's Pandit, he came to Vrindavan and he was doing bhajan there, chanting Harinam. And after some time, he became, in the, he discovered the Aprakachalila. So even today, if you go to Vrindavan and you go to that place, dear Samir, in Vrindavan, the Samadhi of Gorda's Pandit is there. So even though he's famous for living in Ambilka Kalna, but his Samadhi is in Girsumi in Vrindavan. Jai Sachinandan Gohari Ki Jai 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 Jai